What's up guys, Peter Valley, FBAMastery.com here. In this video, I'm gonna cover the little utilized trick of editing your SKU for every item you have for sale on Amazon and embedding it with a bunch of valuable data to dramatically increase the profitability of your repricing, to streamline your accounting, and a bunch of other stuff. Um, I don't see a lot of sellers doing this. It's really, really powerful. You can embed things like average sales rank into your SKU. You can embed things like your buy cost, um, inventory management, a bunch of other stuff. I'm gonna get into all of it. Bear with me, this is really valuable. And a lot of sellers don't do this because it's not like this like sexy trick, but it's still a cool trick and it works. It's not that hard. So let's get into it. Here's what we're gonna cover. Part one, I'm gonna cover what is your merchant SKU. If you don't know what it is, it's one of those just like Amazon lingo things. Once you understand it, it's super easy. You'll get it instantly. Number two, the four reasons to customize your SKU. The reasons that this is important and valuable and profitable fall basically under four categories. Spoiler alert, I only use this for repricing but there's other reasons I'll get into all those. Number three, this is the main part of the video, the nine different types of data that you can edit and embed into your SKUs to make this work. There's nine different types. A lot of sellers know about one or two if they know about any of them at all. There's actually nine that I came up with. There's, there's probably more I'm not even talking about, but the nine main ones I'm gonna cover. And then at the end, how do you know which ones to use? You're not gonna be using all nine, so I'll tell you, I'll give you a simple formula to decide which ones are important to you. Okay, so what exactly is the point of coding, AKA customizing your SKU? If we have to put into one sentence, this would be it. The point of all this and the point of this entire video is to consolidate a bunch of important data that you would normally have to click around to see or would not be able to access at all into one concise place. Between, and we're gonna talk about this, but like average sales rank and like your break even cost, all this stuff, you're just putting it all into one place at a glance. You can see boom, 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 boom all the important data you need to make important decisions about your inventory. Before we go any further in this video, I gotta mention three quick things. Number one, subscribe to the YouTube channel, link right there. You can build a whole business off of what I give away for free in this video. So subscribe, you would be completely clinically insane not to. Number two, head over to fbamastery.com, link right there, or there's a link below this video. Again, you can build a whole business off of what I give away for free over at fbamastery.com. I got free courses, free reports, a bunch of other stuff, no strings, literally free. Number three, there is a much more in-depth version of this video over at fbamastery.com. I have an article version of this video. So if you wanna go even deeper into this, hit the link below this video and I'll see you over at that article. Okay, let's get back to it. Okay, part one, let's get this out of the way. What is your merchant SKU, otherwise known as your SKU? Really, really simple. It's simply a unique identifier that Amazon assigns to every single item that you have for sale on Amazon. So it's right there on your managed inventory page. You can see it here and it's just a string of letters and numbers. Now, normally you could never have to think about this. You could sell on Amazon for like 100 bazillion years and never have to think about your SKU. It's automatically generated, you can forget about it. But it is possible to edit your SKU and that's when things get interesting, but we'll get to that in a second. So how are SKUs normally generated? Well, when you list an item for sale on Amazon, Amazon gives you the option of creating your own SKU or it will auto-generate one for you. I would guess 99% of Amazon sellers just let Amazon generate it and leave it at that. Now, if you're using Amazon listing software to list your items for sale, um, that will also, all listing software that I'm aware of also has an option where it will generate SKUs based on some formula that you tell it. So that's like a third way a SKU is generated. Now, the last kind of like one-on-one type question I'll address about SKUs for, for people that just aren't familiar is this. What is the difference, you might be wondering, between a SKU and an ASIN? Okay, so they're completely different. So an ASIN is a unique identifier that links an item to Amazon's catalog. Whereas a SKU is also a unique identifier, but it links it specifically to a seller's inventory. So one way to look at this is if you have two sellers selling the same item, those two items can have the same ASIN, but they cannot have the same SKU. So a SKU is completely invisible to the outside world. No one else can see it except the seller, whereas an ASIN is visible to the world, and it's the same for every single person looking at the item on Amazon, okay? So they're both unique identifiers, one's for a seller, one's for Amazon's catalog. Okay, so now let's get to why we're here. Why did you come to this video? We're gonna talk about customizing your SKUs. Now, there's really only four reasons you'd wanna do this. So let's get into them. Number one, manual repricing. If you are manually repricing your inventory, having a bunch of data at a glance inside your SKU so you don't have to click around for it is massively important for streamlining the repricing process and actually even more importantly than streamlining, getting the most amount of profit you can out of your inventory because you'll be able to intelligently reprice your inventory because you'll be able to see data like the average sales rank or like the buy cost and a bunch of other stuff we'll get into. Remember there's nine things you can put in your SKU. We'll get into all those in a second. 
All of those will be visible to you, and that will allow you to dramatically, dramatically improve the profitability of your repricing efforts and just simply reprice more intelligently. Now, the second reason is if you're using repricing software. Some repricing software allows you to set different rules by SKU. So, for example, you can have a rule that's specific to, hey, if the buy cost is less than this, then do this. If it's more than this, do this. If the average sales rank is this, then do this, a bunch of other stuff. If you're using repricing software and a repricing software that actually allows you to set rules by SKU, very, very valuable. Third reason is accounting. Now I'll be honest, this is kind of like over my head. Like I am the worst with accounting. Like I just know that I put a dollar in and I get $3 back and that's all I care about. Like I, <laughs> I leave the rest to my account. So I don't really think about this. But some of you are like spreadsheet junkies and you really dig in. You're like, I want to know the ROI broken down by source, the ROI broken down by subcategory or whatever. This is for you guys. You can embed this stuff in your SKU. And if you have any kind of software, whether it's like, or maybe you just know how to just do crazy stuff with Excel. But there's a lot of software that like links your Amazon seller account to like QuickBooks and a bunch of other stuff. This allows you to get really, really granular in how you do all your accounting. Now, the last one is just for general inventory management purposes. Now, this is kind of a catch-all for like a bunch of other stuff, but this can include any, anything from um, knowing where an item is inside your warehouse or your storage space, if you're doing merchant fulfilled selling at all. You can embed that in your SKU. You can embed uh, the source in your SKU, so you can actually track inventory by sources. You can also like track different trends this way. There's like a bunch of stuff you can do. Now, what do I do this for? Well, I already, already kind of told you this. I only embed data in my SKUs and customize my SKUs for the purpose of repricing. That's 100%. I want to know exactly what the average sales rank is, exactly what I paid for an item, what my break-even cost is. This is all stuff I put in my SKU. And it's only so that when I'm repricing items, I can say, hey, this item needs to be repriced this way. This one should be priced a little bit differently. I don't just do it as simply as all books repriced this way. I like to get very, very granular. And being able to edit and customize my SKUs allows me to do that and extract more profit per item. Okay, here we are. The nine different types of data or otherwise known as attributes or data points or whatever you want to call it that you can embed in your SKU. Some of these are going to be a lot more important than others. And by the way, do not think that you have to use all of these. In fact, there is a, I don't know any seller that uses all nine of these. Um, chances are you're going to pick like one or two or three and ignore the rest. And that's actually, that's actually what you should be doing. Okay. So I'm gonna get all nine though, and some of these are gonna be relevant to some people and not others. Okay, number one, the type of product. In other words, is it a book? Is it a video game? Is it, what is it? Is it music? Now, this is one of the least important ones in my opinion because this is a data that's easily accessible anywhere else. So if you, in other words, if you're in your managed inventory, the type of item is right there. Not only do you have a photo of it, it will actually give you the category too in a separate column. So no matter what you're doing, you should have the item category readily available so you don't really need this, but there can be reasons it can be important. So you may wanna include in the SKU that it's a book or again, music, or like what the, the high level Amazon category is. Okay, number two, way more important than number one, I'm a huge fan of this one, and that is the subcategory of item. So in other words, number one was the parent category. Within that category, what type of item does this represent? So as an example, this is what I do for all my inventory, I denote what type of book the book is. So if it's a textbook, I put the word text in the SKU. If it's an audiobook, I put the word audio. I want to know when I'm repricing my inventory, not just what the parent category is, because we already know that. I want to know what type of this book this is so that I know how I can reprice this inventory most intelligently. So again, if it's a textbook, I'm going to reprice that completely differently than if it's an audiobook. And on a bunch of, I have like four or five different book categories that I, that I denote in my SKU. And again, this dramatically, dramatically increases the efficiency, actually the precision, I should say, of my repricing efforts. So there's probably a version of this within every category of like, huh, I wanna know if it's this versus this. Like if you do grow health and beauty, is it a supplement or is it makeup? You might wanna reprice those differently. I don't know. I'm an expert in books, so I know exactly how to reprice inventory. There may be a version of this in other categories. Really, really powerful. Number three, inventory source. This is kind of a fun one. This allows you to basically track your inventory by source, track your sales by source, um, you can see the ROI based on source. You can just do lots and lots of stuff, get really granular when you can actually see where every single item that's sold or didn't sell, where it came from. So you might just have like a spreadsheet and you might have your list of sources. You might just decide you're gonna give like a three letter code to every single source that you, that you frequent. So maybe like WAL for Walmart, right? And this at a glance, you can see, okay, well this inventory is not selling. Where did it come from? Or this is selling, where did this inventory come from? Or there, there's probably a myriad of reasons you would wanna do this. The main one would just be able to track your profits by source. Number four, average sales rank. 
massive fan of this one. Massive, massive. Because again, when I'm repricing, I don't just want to know the current rank, which is very easily accessible. I want to know the average rank, which is a much more accurate representation of how an item's selling. So you can get average rank from a bunch of sources. You can get it from, obviously, your scanning app. You can get it from Keepa. There's other sources. I always want that in the SKU. Because again, when I'm repricing, I gotta know what is the av- what is the actual demand for this item, not just what is the dem- demand like right at this particular moment, right? That's the difference between current rank and average rank, how it can be really, really deceiving. Really powerful. Okay, number five, purchase price. You can put the purchase price in your SKU. Really powerful because this allows you to see, okay, well, how much did I pay for this? And so if you're really militant about like never losing money on an item, you might just go ahead and reprice, not reprice the item as often or maybe decide not to reprice it below a certain amount, have a different floor price based on how much you paid for an item. Really, really important because after you list an item for sale, you're probably not going to have access to this information. You're never going to, you're not going to have like, you're not going to like pull out your receipts and go, where did I get this? How much did I pay for it? Right? It's good to have that right in the SKU available at a glance. Number six is kind of like a, you're probably going to want to choose five or six. I don't see a reason to do both, but I might be missing something here. Number six is your break even price. So this is a price where you know you've got to sell an item for this amount or higher, or you will lose money on the item. So again, this is huge when it comes to repricing. So if you know, okay, hey, look, I paid you know four dollars for this item or three dollars or whatever, and based on the weight and the size, I need to sell this item for you know eleven dollars or twelve dollars to break even. You need to have that. You have that number readily available to you, so you know, hey, don't ever reprice, don't ever price it below this amount. Number seven is including the condition of the item in the SKU. Now, again, this is another one of those that I personally don't do, um, and I think there might be a bunch of reasons to do this that I'm not thinking of right now, but the one that does come to mind is with online arbitrage. So let's say you're, you're sourcing inventory online. You might want to put the, the condition that you thought you were getting when you ordered the item. So let's say you ordered an item, and it was good condition, and then you go and list it for sale, and you see, oh, well, it's actually acceptable. Like, I can't list this for good. You can see in the SKU, oh, wow, when I order this, I actually thought it was in good condition. Now I'm got, I got an acceptable item. And that could tell you, hey, maybe you want to um, return it or whatever. But it's just a good way to kind of track any discrepancies between what you thought you were getting and what you actually got. Number eight is the date that you listed the item for sale or the date that you purchased it. Now, I'd say this is probably like among the least cool ones, the least important ones that you can you can put in your SKU because the day that you listed something for sale is always going to be readily available to you. It's always going to be there in your listing software. It's always going to be there on your managed inventory page. It's always going to be there. So it's never far away. You don't have to click anywhere to get it, unlike the most of the rest of this these attributes where like if it's not in your SKU, you got to be like looking around or you don't have any access to it at all. So I don't want to diminish it. Okay, number nine, this is the last one, the location. This is probably the one that like the fewest people watching this are ever going to use, um, but it's still kind of still kind of cool. If you're doing merch fulfilled selling, you can actually put the location where that item is, like if it's a book, where that book is on what shelf in your storage space in, you know, your warehouse, if you're fortunate enough to have that big enough business to have a warehouse or whatever. So this allows you to see at a glance, okay, here's where this item is, so you can go retrieve it, pack it, and ship it. Okay, so that concludes all nine. Now, how do you decide which ones to use? Because the realistically, the vast, vast majority of sellers are not even gonna include half of these in your SKU. And you won't even need to, right? A lot of these are only for high volume sellers, or as we just saw with number nine, for merch fulfilled sellers. Most of these are not gonna apply to you. So how do you decide which ones to use? The top three, if I had to pick for me personally, are gonna be average rank, number one. Number two, the subcategory of the item. And number three, the purchase price. Those are kind of the three main ones for me. I think those are gonna be like the most universal. Um, So if you had to just start with three, I would start with those. That's it, guys. If there's any attributes I missed that you could add to your SKUs that you are adding that I just completely blanked on, go ahead and drop a comment below. All right, guys, we covered a lot of ground. You now have a three-part mission. Are you ready? Mission number one, subscribe to this YouTube channel. You can build a whole business off of what I give away for free. Do it right now. Number two, get all my free stuff. Hit the link below this video. Go to fbamastery.com. Get free reports, free web classes, no strings attached. Free means free. Hit the link below this video right now. And mission number three, take what you learned in this video and go make money with it. This is Peter Valley signing off. See you in the next video.